anxieties I've heard many times is if millions of people used electric cars, all the wires would melt, anarchy would reign, zombies would invade, and only Bruce Willis could save us. A tiny bit of research has shown that this is probably not the case. About a year ago, a project called My Electric Avenue was launched in the UK. It asked for people who could organise a cluster of ten neighbours to get together and take an 18-month lease on a Nissan Leaf. Over 2,000 people applied, and now nine residential and two industrial clusters are taking part with 111 cars. I visited this street in Marlow, Buckinghamshire, where ten neighbours had just taken possession of their cars. The object of the exercise is to see not only how people use electric cars, but also the impact on the local grid. On a nationwide level, the mass adoption of electric cars would actually help the national grid manage the peaks in demand. But what about on a local level? Now, this truly unremarkable looking box is a substation. Well, can the hundreds of substations around the country deal with the extra demand in just one street? I'm from a company called Zero Carbon Futures, which is based in the northeast. Right. And our role in the project is to coordinate the installation of the charging points and the technology which is going to be installed, identifying the people um, where, taking them through, making sure that they, they understand what's involved in the project and also installing the, the technology and the charging point so that they can charge their vehicle at home. We've actually had a great response to the project. There's been approximately 800 expressions of interest. So that's 800 people registering through the website who want to take part. Um, and that equates to, at the moment, a, approximately 50 potential clusters that we have to work through right. and to get our target. I mean, we only actually need seven clusters of at least, of at least so, 10. So users. you're not short of people who are keen to not take part? Once, once the technology is installed, um, once the piece of equipment which is going to be installed on the, on the feeder, then that would be able to monitor and control the supply that's delivered to the charging point. Right. Ah, so it's not only that it, it's not only that you can see when people are charging, but you can, if say there's ten cars plugged in at six at night and everybody's cooking and having showers, can you turn the cars off at that moment? Yes. Right. Which is really the, which is really that what it's all about. It's all about the control thing. Yes. If they all return home and plug in their cars at the same time, the strain on the substation could be too much. So some rather interesting technology is being tried out. So, so we've got a technology called a spree, which we're looking to trial as part of the Electric Avenue project. Uh, and really what that is, is basically a device that sits in a substation with also a device that sits at a charging point. Uh, and when the network basically run, uh, says it, it's reaching its capacity limits, it sends a signal down to the, uh, to the uh, charging post down the line to basically say, can you now back off for a bit? The, the user won't have any change to their behaviour, so they can still do exactly what they normally do. Yeah. So it's a typical example of whether people actually come home at 6pm or plug in and expect to charge at that point, or even if it comes on later in the night. If things are all happening at the same time, there might be a point where the network starts to reach its limits. Right. What we're just trying to do is just try and soften that, yes. so to flatten that out. And it's one of those things that the, the networks that, we've, we're, that are in the ground today, I mean, many of them were, were installed back in the 60s. Yeah. And to be fair, many of the networks that are installed today will still be here out to, to 2100. They're very, low, very long term assets. Another interesting aspect is the habit of clustering, which has been observed when one household installs solar panels. Many neighbours will then follow suit and install solar panels themselves. And it seems the same thing is happening with electric cars. Now, this is your house, yes. and this is your car, yes. and that's your charging socket. Can I say you're one of the cluster? Yes, absolutely. That's right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> and so how, I, I don't know how long you've had it or anything. So how long have you been driving so electric cars? I've been driving this car for a, only for a couple of weeks. Right. Um, and my kids love it. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, um, picked a, three of the children up from the local school. Right. And they're all going home. I've got all the mums saying to me, love the car. Oh, good. And, and wow. Yes, the kids really, really like right, it. Right, right. Really easy to drive. Um, I don't, it's fine to charge. Right. It's just a change in habit. Yeah. So rather than going to the petrol station, get home, get. plug your car in. And you do find you do that when you get home, you just sort of, you just plug it in straight away. I, I, I do. I know people, pe lots of people have got them on timers. Yeah. But yeah. And, and, and the, all, the, all your neighbours that have, have got the electric cars, I mean, have you, I'm, I'm assuming you've had a natter about it. I mean, oh, absolutely. You, has the general uh, uh, response to it been positive? Um, they, they absolutely. Right. And other people around here as right. well that couldn't get on the cluster. Right. 
Um, there had to be ten on the cluster, yeah. and there's uh, a couple of friends who couldn't who couldn't form ten. Right. And they're all asking how they can get can, can we do it? And, yeah. yeah how, how they can sort <laughs> it out. So. Right. Uh, yeah, I think it when they other other people see it working. Yeah. For people, it will slowly. It's pick slowly up. Used. Yeah. So this is one of the charges in this cluster of charges. They're all obviously fed from the national grid and the, it, it, then right down at the local level from the local substation. And there's equipment now in the substation that if everyone comes here, say the, the classic case is a, is a night in November uh, when it's cold and everybody comes home in the evening and they all plug their cars in and switch them on and they all start charging. And that's a huge drain on the grid at a time when the grid is, is at its absolute peak level. That's when the, the most electricity is being consumed in this country and the, 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 the jumps up and down are really very dramatic and so what the substation does then is it goes right there's 10 cars plugged in but that's too much draw so I'm going to turn some of them off but it doesn't turn them off for good it, it, it cycles them so it will turn this car off for half an hour and let the one that's next door carry on charging for half an hour and then they'll swap over so this one switches back on and the one next door switches off and that goes around the whole system and that's one of the ways of, of, of dropping the total demand Demand, which is kind of clever and clearly what's going to be happening on a nationwide basis and what the whole point of this experiment is is to make sure that doesn't impact on the the, the, the usefulness of the car because if you if you've plugged it in and you want it charged because you've got to go out again then that could you know reduce the range you have but what it also shows, it teaches people to go, hang on a minute, do I need to charge it now? No, I probably don't. This is what I've learned from using electric cars, is that I plug it in and mine's on a timer and it doesn't switch on until midnight because it's much cheaper. <laughs> it only costs me 5p a kilowatt hour at night, so to fill my batteries usually cost me about a quid. Whereas if I plugged it in at this time of the day, it would cost me about three quid. So it makes kind of financial sense and as soon as people start using electric cars regularly, they kind of learn that. So this is very much a learning process. I learned a great deal visiting the UK's first electric avenue. For example, our national grid was designed in the 1920s. The technology being tested is designed to minimise the strain on that poor old grid. I learned that the next step is to test vehicle-to-grid technology, i.e. the ability to take power stored in the cars and distribute it at times of peak demand. I learned that five years ago the cost of grid batteries was £6,000 per kilowatt hour. It's now dropped to £700 per kilowatt hour. There are currently over 14,000 electric cars on the road in the UK. In total, these can store around 340 megawatt hours of electricity. That is already quite a big battery. Let's go, let's go.